Frank Alpering. He's somewhere online, virtually present. He will be Frank. Uh, <coughs> hi, I'm glad that you are with us. So he's a consultant of the GIZ and this uh, uh, project. <laughs> he has a consulting career uh, after the scientific career from um, this uh, decided he wants to learn from people with different international experience which took him to the position of consultant <clears throat> uh, special interest is in the area of promoting private sector and economic initiatives on those weaker uh, market economies where there are uh, limitations and pressure of, of politics this is why frank we have we have frank today with us you know, but um, he wrote really nicely on the page talking about himself. He says, like, what he learned of these economies is that those limitations very often are incentives for innovations. And this is what we had a chance to see, even with these six companies. <clears throat> they are good at finding their way around to uh, function under the restraining environment. They're really innovative <clears throat> and really capable. Now I will uh, hand floor floor to our um, speaker to share the results uh, about the um, medium size, uh, small and medium sized companies, and that will be a good introduction for our further, Mr. Frank. Yes, thank you very much to have the opportunity to to have a have a word here. Uh, my name, like uh, Mrs. Sander already said, is Frank Weltring. I'm a partner of a meso company, which is called Meso Partner. And we did just now a baseline study on the wood processing and metal processing sector in Bosnia-Herzegovina and how businesses in these two sectors are already confronted with, uh, let's say, with greening requirements within their own chains, especially to buyers within the European market. And um, what I would like to emphasize is that, um, yeah, I think there is this, this tendency of moving from a fossil fuel, fuel to a to a neutral carbon economy, at least from an idea of the European Union. This is a, a bridge which is coming from Germany, an old industrial heritage in nowadays located in a very green tourism area. And I use that as a template um, because I wanted to emphasize here in this talk also that um, according to our interviews with interview uh, with with businesses in Bosnia Herzegovina, the European Green Deal, the directions also which the Europe, uh, European Union is providing, also including the Western Balkan Green Agenda, has already a strong impact on some leading EU buyers, but also SMEs in Bosnia Herzegovina. And I'm excited to hear also from the businesses which are on the stage there. To hear what they think about it but in a nutshell we want to bring across a message that the european green deal but also the the agenda for the western balkans the green agenda pressures more and more european union buyers also to become greener european union buyers so larger businesses but also smaller medium enterprise businesses are redirecting their strategies in their orientation to become also comply with certain greening requirements and they are asking also their suppliers. They are starting to ask their suppliers to also comply with certain greening aspects in their production processes, in their supplying uh, chain. And we see that leading suppliers or leading businesses in Bosnia Herzegovina now looking at these two sectors of wood processing and, um, and metal processing are starting to become greener. And um, we would like to explore that a little bit more. So it's not something which is in the moon. They are up uh, greening pressure or greening tendency. They are already very much uh, visible in economic relationships. And here you see um, this, this demonstration of the, the future of the European Union where they want to walk through. And we say it's not actually, it's not a something in the moon. It's really very much a paradigm shift, which we have to consider. You see on the left side, all the sectors which are to a certain extent influenced by that. And um, what we see now here is with the objective of having a net zero uh, carbon economy uh, in 2050, this process has already started. And we see that very strongly 
when we look at the activities which have been done in the last two years. In December 2020, the European Green Deal was announced. And since then, all the regulations, the directives um, have been reconsidered. That means there has been a trend now to think about how can we uh, stronger emphasize the, the objective to reach the goals which are in front of us. And this, these are often uh, in line with certain initiatives which are then encouraged to find out what is possible. And uh, I'm sure that you know the Green Deal with this objective of moving to a more uh, circular economy. But behind that are really legislative uh, aspects which are really pressuring um, countries, but also not only European countries, but also accession countries which are interested to move into the uh, European Union to comply with these standards. And uh, you've got the national climate plans which have to be handed in to demonstrate also coming closer to the acquis communautaire of the European Union integration. So there is, uh, these, these instruments are quite strong and quite influential. And we see that again, when we look into the business relations. So this is the green agenda for the Western Balkans. And when you look into the details here, um, when we think about 2030 objectives, you see that uh, also the green agenda has got this objective to as, to mention these aspects which are relevant with the EU 2050 ambition, with the circular economy aspects, but also with aspects which are considering all and affecting all uh, business sectors when it comes to air, water, pollution, and so on. So I would just like to have a second of digging a bit deeper into some of these directives which are relevant for the green agenda for the Western Balkans, but also for businesses and uh, EU accession countries. And I, I don't want to go into detail, but all of these directives were reconsidered since, since 2020, and they are very directly affecting also Bosnia-Herzegovina when it comes to the EU emission trading system. Bosnia-Herzegovina is now pressured also to, to price emissions uh, and to also reduce emissions. There is this trend also to increase renewables up to 42% until, until uh, 2030 in the European Union. And also that means also for Bosnia-Herzegovina to have to demonstrate an increase of renewables. We have got whole, let's say, aspects of, of emission decrease re relevant in, in industrial sectors especially, but also uh, when it comes to hazardous waste. Mrs. Sander, you gave just now this example, making use of hazardous waste, how can that be done? But there is also now within the European, the pressure not only to make use of it, also, but also to recycle it in a way that it's uh, sustainable. We have got a whole label aspect. Everybody knows on washing machines, we have got energy efficiency labels. And the idea now within the European Union is to move towards uh, having a kind of green passport for other products, not only looking at energy efficiency, but that consumers also know about what are footprint aspects, what are environmental considerations of different kinds of products, which even considers also furniture and steel products. And then we have got this whole topic of waste and waste management and how do we reduce waste. And uh, when we look at Bosnia-Herzegovina with more than 90% uh, waste, which is landfilled, there is this also this pressure of how do we make use of this waste. Companies need to make use of their waste. They've got a high cost on, on managing this waste. On the other hand, also, it's a country issue. Which is, uh, challenged, which is challenging also Bosnia-Herzegovina. I would like to go a little bit more into this one, into these private standards, where we see this greening pressure really directly affecting businesses. And um, what we see is in this baseline study, uh, I would like to, to, to give some, some findings of that one. There is, first of all, there is a trend towards businesses, especially EU businesses, asking their suppliers on energy efficiency activities. So um, not only on energy efficiency, but also making use of resources. We see that in the wood processing sector, it starts with, with, with Forest Stewardship Council standards, but it also encourages now uh, businesses and buyers are asking more and more about uh, investing into renewable energy. We have got a tendency of life cycle management requirements. It's just starting that businesses like IKEA also is asking for thinking about how to adjust or to adapt uh, other, let's say, input products instead of using, um, let's say, styropor or other products. So there is a trend which is starting directly at the moment now 
which we got also as an information from the businesses which we interviewed in Bosnia Herzegovina. And there is this green supply chain management that means that suppliers which are supplying to European Union also need to demonstrate where do they get their supplying products from. So there is three aspects which we think are already very uh, vivid in these uh, European related value chains. And that are the main exporting actually exporting uh, sectors in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina like wood processing and um, like metal processing. So just in a nutshell, and I would like to encourage maybe also a little bit this discussion um, in, the, in the plenary, um, what we saw from the interviews which we did, we did interviews with supporting organizations, we did interviews with businesses of these two sectors. And the overall opinion was when we look at the system which is in place to promote green, but also innovation and eco-innovation um, tendencies, that there is this understanding that within the European Union, yes, we have got policies in place, which are to a certain extent the drivers, and they are linked to strategies. And then we have got targeted support programs, which are supporting these implementation of these strategies. And we have got a supporting organizational ecosystem, which is very strongly then having access to these programs, but also providing leading businesses with innovations into the direction of eco-innovations or environmental innovations. So this is a perspective which a lot of interviewees saw now in Bosnia and Herzegovina from the European Union. When they are asked about what do you see, what is the system working, how is the system working in Bosnia and Herzegovina, they see it the other way around. So that there are leading businesses like the ones which are, I'm sure on the panel also, leading businesses which are in contact with the European Union, which know about, starting to know about demands of the of these buyers, of these large buyers, and they are already starting to invest into some activities, uh, some reorganization of the processes, to making it more efficient, but also thinking about um, renewables. And they are then asking supporting organizations, what, how can you help us? Um, and they are also uh, um, asking for, for, let's say, legislative requirements for that. Um, but often the supporting organizations are still themselves on their way to find somehow new services. There are some services existing, um, but there are actually a lack of support programs apart from donor activities. And there is also a lack, that is what, what the opinion was from the interviewees, of really targeted policies and strategies, which are then also getting implemented with, a let's say, a certain vision in mind. So this is, um, let's say, one of the findings. And when we go more into detail into the, the baseline study uh, findings, just would like to, to give, a, give a short short overview about that one. When we look at businesses, we see that there are these leading businesses that are ma mainly value added, quite uh, competitive businesses, which are in a very strong relation with EU buyers, with EU markets. And they are, to a certain extent, the drivers, really. They are the ones which are informed. A lot of supporting organizations even asking them uh, what their, their knowledge is. Um, and they are, at the moment, strongly focusing on, on energy efficiency because they expect higher prices. They are investing into energy efficiency, into digitalization of processes, but also into renewable energy uh, with some challenges to, to feed in their, their, their pr produced energy in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And they see also that EU buyers are moving in towards asking more than energy efficiency. For example, IKEA has got certain objectives of reaching their renewable energy targets within their own strategy, their own business strategy. And they are starting to ask also their suppliers to think about investments into renewable energy. But it goes beyond even that. It moves even into footprint aspects and into life cycle aspects. And um, what these businesses face are really bottlenecks in having access to knowledge in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also legislative prerequisites in that respect. And um, finally, there is a vision of these leading businesses, I would say, that there is a future of competitiveness within Bosnia and Herzegovina being close to the European market. But that means you need to add value to the product. You cannot export mainly raw materials like uh, wood logs. Um, and you have to add to that really green requirements, standard requirements to use that also for your own innovation process. When it comes towards the targeted support programs, we see that mainly donors are active here with some first EU funds coming in. Uh, there is a need for, for more strategies, which are really then also oriented towards becoming implemented. There is, an, there is a need to overcome certain legislative barriers in different entities, but also in the cantons. 
Uh, so there is a there are delay processes where businesses are quite frustrated about, and there is a need for setting national priorities also into the direct direction of innovation, digitalization, but also greening, and so providing with that also certain funding activities. And when it comes finally to support organizations, we see that a lot of supporting organizations are already offering some some activities like, for example, courses on energy efficiency or standardization efforts. Um, providing some information about certain standards which are coming in, like energy management standards and so on. But there is an overall, there is a search for new services. And I think what is interesting to see is that a lot of supporting organizations are now in exchange with other EU supporting organizations to know about what are the tools, what are the, the let's say, the services which can be offered and what are the requirements of it. I, I like very much this peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning approach in that respect, uh, also promoted by the GIZ through certain study tours but also through direct contact between these organizations. But finally, what we see is there is a lack of a kind of ecosystem approach where supporting organizations are supporting each other, working with each other. And there is this requirement also to, to have more horizontal networking between these organizations. Overall, in, in, a, in the final words, there is clearly a need for a governance leadership in that respect, moving in towards the direction of innovation and greening of production processes. And there, the government plays an important role, but also all the organizations of businesses, but as well as supporting organizations. And there is a need for a more systemic effort. So this, in a nutshell, uh, were our, or are our findings, which we are still processing. Uh, but I think that demonstrates very strongly this, this already this existing move towards from a fossil fuel, let's say, production processes within leading businesses in Bosnia and Herzegovina towards more greening aspects. With that, I would like to thank you very much. I'll thank Frank for uh, to use the 10 minutes and cover so much in what he did in this uh, research.